Hey, my name is Bob Stillerman, and I want to welcome you to Sardis Baptist Church and to our virtual discussion entitled Capturing the Image of Table. Each week during this Lenten season of 2022, uh, we're gathering on Wednesdays at noon uh, to consider the types of tables in our own households, uh, but also in, in the various communities that we take part in. Uh, but we also want to give thought to what happens at these tables, what do we see and what do we not see, uh, so that we can be more present the next time we gather at table uh, on Monday, Thursday. Uh, and, and, and we hope that, that what we recognize and experience at that table will steal us uh, for the events of Friday uh, and, and ultimately prepare us to experience the joy of Easter Sunday. So we're really glad you joined us. Um, if you are joining us uh, uh, via social media, we hope you'll um, comment on, on this presentation and ask questions uh, and join the discussion uh, as you are able or join us in real time uh, on Zoom each Wednesday at noon. So uh, each week as we discuss this idea of table, we start with this kind of visual mood board. These are just a sample of the different kinds of tables that you might experience in the Sardis community. They range from uh, formal to casual, uh, include all shapes and sizes, uh, all moods really. And um, I'm blocking the, the picture it looks like, but I think my favorite table uh, on here is our, is our llama from an animal blessing in years past, uh, who is enjoying uh, the table of the Sardis grounds and reminds us that table uh, is bigger than just, uh, than just human neighbors. So one of the things that we did to begin our conversation uh, in the first session was to think about what happens at a table, uh, really what are the verbs and actions uh, that we might find at any table, but particularly a communion table here at Sardis. We came up with eight verbs. There are certainly more, but um, these help us to kind of set uh, the table, pardon the pun, uh, for considering uh, what has to happen in order for communion to take place. We make space uh, for our meals or our gatherings to exist. Uh, we prepare, whether that is uh, physically or emotionally or spiritually, to be in that place. Uh, we're intentional about gathering. We share the resources that we have. We also receive what is given to us uh, with, in, in, the spirit and, in, in the spirit of which it's shared. Uh, the table also offers a chance uh, to reflect on the things in our lives. Uh, each time there's a table or a meal, there's also a reset. Uh, we break things down. We, we reset to, to where we were. Uh, and then finally, there's a sense of rest at table. There's that chance to, uh, to re-energize and move forward and, and, uh, and, and have the Sabbath of table uh, lead to the work of tomorrow. So those are some of the things that happen at table. In the second week, we talked about the kinds of tables that emerge in our lives. There are familiar tables. Uh, familiar tables are uh, those tables of routine, those things that happen uh, daily, uh, in, in, almost hourly in our lives. Ordinal tables are also familiar to us. They just include a wider uh, array of people and probably happen with less frequency. Uh, special tables are those tables of celebration, holidays, birthdays, other things, uh, to where we are very intentional about celebrating something and the interval is much less, uh, is much more sporadic than the, than the familiar and ordinal tables. Sometimes mobile tables appear in our lives. Those are uh, the tables that, again, uh, emerge out of necessity. Traveling tables, uh, work tables, um, study tables, those things that just, um, uh, that, that just sort of happen. Uh, spontaneous tables are, are another one, uh, and I would say those are, are those that emerge because of, of the relationships and, and the joy and the hospitality uh, that happens in the present moment and, uh, and, and, and happens when neighbors engage with one another. And then finally, one of the things we talked about was that um, while there are certainly a number of tables that we all experience, there are certainly others that, um, that either uh, we do not experience for ourselves or our actions, whether consciously or subconsciously, uh, prevent others from experiencing. Uh, and so we wanna give thought to uh, the tables we have access to, the tables we do not have access to, 
and our role in, uh, in hosting and guesting in order to make the tables in our lives accessible to those around us. So that's sort of a recap of where we've been. Again, we've talked about what happens at a table and what kinds of tables enter our lives. Today, I wanna to shift our focus more toward uh, what we physically find at the table. Um, so one thing we get is, is daily bread. Um, that is, we get the things or the essentials that we need to thrive. Food is probably the most obvious thing. We get, we get bread and we get, uh, we get drink and, and that, that sort of physical energy. Um, but I also think it, it's fair to say that beyond food, we do, need, um, we do need space and we do need fellowship and we need, do need community um, to have a, a, a broader, more well-rounded health uh, and get the full experience of table. Um, leftovers is another thing we find. Um, really, you might translate that as, as abundance. Um, maybe we don't always feel like it's abundance when we're eating uh, last week's macaroni or, or green beans or whatever. But again, I think if we're doing the kind of table uh, that we want to aspire to, then that means the, the meal we have, whether that's um, the food, the fellowship, or the spiritual, physical, emotional components, all of that stuff um, is sustained well beyond the date that it's served. Um, so in this instance, leftovers are a really, really good thing. Um, in addition to leftovers, we get do-overs. Um, sometimes we do burn the casserole, um, or sometimes uh, we, uh, we attempt something that didn't go the right way. I think tables are a really good space to offer grace, even when our best is not our best. And so the way I'd phrase it is, the table is a place to try and to try and to try and to try again, and to know, no matter what, that we are enough and that we are loved by those who we gather with, just as we are. So daily bread, leftovers, and do-overs are three things we find at the table. And how about three more? If I believe we're doing table right, we find belonging. Um, we long for spaces in our lives that offer us uh, a chance to, to simply be, be who we are. And so um, <clears throat> that means in order to have belonging, that the spaces are accessible, there are not reservations, seats should be open. And, um, and, and tables, if, if we're offering belonging, means that, that this is a spot or a, or a place setting where we can simply be comfortable being who we are. <clears throat> the table is also a place for dialogue. Um, I think it's really important to note that tables are not echo chambers. If we're doing tables right, and, and if we are creating a space where people feel comfortable being who they are, that means tables also, also need to be safe enough for people to offer and receive their thoughts. And so basically what that means, if we're doing dialogue, it means that dis disagreement and respect are not mutually exclusive. Uh, and, and then finally, tables should be a place of empathy. I think when we share in our common needs and celebrate our common joys, we see humanity and value in one another, and we consider life uh, from other perspectives. I think all of us have been tired at some, some point. All of us have been hungry at some point. All of us have felt lonely at some point. All of us have sought a desire to, um, to, to rest and relax and connect and, and to refuel. And a table offers a place uh, to, to share in that very common denominator and out of that very common denominator um, create something very formative and real. Uh, so again, uh, the fourth, uh, the six things that we might find at tables. Daily bread, the things that fuel us. Leftovers, that is, we find abundance. Do-overs, we find grace. Belonging, we find a chance to be part of community. Dialogue, we find a chance to, to stretch our minds in a safe way. And empathy, we find a place to share in common ground.
So those are some ideas of the kinds of things we might find a table. And I'll leave, we, leave you with a few questions for the week. Uh, what have you found at your tables this week? Have you found safety? Have you found grace? Have you found openness and abundance? Uh, if so, think about um, how that came about and, and how that affects the rest of your week. Um, I think if we're going to talk about abundance and we're going to talk about grace and we're going to talk about healing and wholeness and we're going to talk about meals, what does it mean for you to be full? And is there a difference between uh, being full after a meal and feeling whole as a person? Finally, what value is there to being seen and heard? Are tables places where you can fill up, where you can be made whole and where you can be seen and heard? And then finally, the last question to consider is how do we make tables places of discovery rather than secrecy or hiddenness? I hope you'll take time to consider these questions. Again, we encourage you to share your thoughts on social media or to text and ping uh, people within the Sardis community. The more we consider uh, what table means in our lives and, and the expectations we have for that table, uh, I think the more powerful table becomes, particularly uh, when we intentionally share at, at, at a communion table uh, this coming Monday, Thursday, and in the many weeks and months to come. Thanks for hanging around, and I hope you have a great week.